Yeah. Hi, everybody. So the recording is on now. And um, welcome to this new Jenkins infrastructure meeting. Um, considering the week, we have a few things. Um, so yeah, the, the, the week has been pretty interesting. Um, basically, everything started uh, last week when we had an outage with the AKS cluster. Um, so the cluster was in the broken sense, in the broken state since weeks. And I try, I just tried to upgrade the, the, the cluster to, to see if it solved the problem. And so basically what it, it leads, uh, we just all nodes were disconnected from the load balancer. So basically it wasn't possible to use a cluster anymore. And so we investigate um, several solutions and none of them were working. So we decided to, um, to, to, delete, to delete the cluster and restore everything with why, which, which um, um, was also interesting in, in multiple ways because we discover um, some issues. And one of them um, was related to the LDAP database. So basically what we discover is um, Around uh, February, um, the, the the volume that stored backups switched in a read-only mode, so we had no backups for the that database since February, um, and so basically we weren't able to restore all the users. So the first focus was first to restore all the services on that cluster, and now we are investigating to what are the multiple issues um, with the that users. So first, uh, do we have do you have any questions regarding the AKS cluster? Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, it would be interesting to know more about uh, what we monitor on the cluster um, and especially how to better contribute uh, to monitoring uh, in the future. Uh, yeah, it can be discussed later if there are guidelines which I need to, to read. I think the cluster was, was the cluster was running, but it was whenever any changes would try to be made, it just there was issues. So we we hadn't been able to run the deployment job for the last couple of weeks because it kept failing. And then I think Olivia was trying to do updates to the ingress records in preparation for the next version, um, and it kind of was not working properly, from what I understand. Yeah, so, so basically that's. Yeah, that, that's what happens. Um, the cluster is monitored. Uh, we are using Datadog to monitor the, the cluster. Um, every service is running on the cluster is monitored. Um, one of the things that we could have better monitored is that, that database, but um, having, I mean, I'm looking, I'm looking at what happened with the cluster, and I'm not sure if we could have um, worked on it in a better way. So except that having more clusters spread the risk on multiple cluster. But otherwise, um, that was a weird issue. Um, something that I also tried was to open a ticket on Azure. Um, but there are two things. First, um, it would have taken more than one hour, or more than a few hours to solve the issue. And then we don't have the support anymore with Azure. And if we want to have the technical support, we have to pay for that. So. Um, um, so this is also something that we discover. I'm not sure that we that we really need uh, that. Um, I think, um, yeah, I, I think we just had to to, to 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 clean up everything. So that that cluster was running since two years, something that uh, not since one year, and uh, since one year, sorry, that one was running for one for a year. And um, on, a, on, a, on a monitoring point of view, I don't think that um, yeah, but we could have catched this. No, same. Was, was, was it the control plane level on the Microsoft side? So we don't have access to what's what's oh. what's was broken. Yeah, and uh, would it help if you are using other backup services? For example, if you connected to Valero directly instead of really on a Microsoft. So just 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 to come back to the cluster and not talking yeah. about the LDAP backups, um, the microcross of the cluster that we are using is called AKS, and basically it's a managed cluster um, by um, by Azure. So basically they manage the master, and the only thing that we have a control is the agents. And so when we want to use a, an updated version of Kubernetes, we just uh, just ask Microsoft to update the version to the next one that we want to use, and Microsoft we do the we do the management to to turn the machine down up and so on. So we don't have the visibility there. And basically what happened here is 
um, we had a lot of timeout issues between the agent and the master. So um, it was not possible to, to, let's say, SSH on the machine, debug, see what's happening with the ATCD or whatever. It was just like a black box to us. Um, so that's why I actually try to, to, to upgrade, uh, hoping that upgrading the version, even to a minor version, would just restart the nodes on, on Azure sites. Um, that's one of the things that we tried. I was, I was also hoping that maybe uh, Azure support would help us in this case, but it was not the case. So that's why we just said we decided to just delete everything because it sounds at that time that it was the, 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 the quicker uh, solution to our problem. Um, I did not realize at that time that um, the LDAP uh, backup was not um, done anymore. So basically the way LDAP is backups is done is each time, so every day there is a crunch up that dumps the database on, on, Azure, uh, on Azure file storage. And each time we stop the container, we also generate a backup um, on the database, uh, on the, the Azure storage. And that Azure storage is replicated in multiple regions. So um, there is no reason that the, 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 the backup would be gone. And so basically what happened here, we just mounted that Azure file storage in read-only mode instead of um, instead of read-write. Um, and maybe something, I mean, something that we would need here is a monitoring job that just say, sounds like your backup is quite old, let's say older than uh, one week or two weeks or one day, two day, whatever. Um, this is something that we could have seen earlier, but, um, yeah, so something that you have to keep in mind is that LDAP um, service is running on Kubernetes since three years. Um, multiple time we had turn to turn to move the cluster the container into a multiple cluster because we upgraded the cluster of within multiple operation. And it was always almost transparent because the cluster was done for a few seconds and we were able to back up and restore very quickly. Um, so this was, this was really the first time that um, we had such issues with that so, yeah, I started uh, preparing a retrospective for the computer database. Um, yeah, and I guess setting up um, some kind of monitoring pulled up, and all of the critical data backups would be um, quite high on our list. So, yep. So, sure. yeah, things happen, but uh, definitely we could uh, prevent it in the future. Yeah, there... and otherwise, yeah, otherwise, um, there are multiple uh, things that I still have to 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 report in a retrospective for the Kubernetes outage, but we saw um, we had a bunch of issues. Uh, like, for example, we we generate a public IP, so we generate an Azure public IP that we can reuse, that we can assign to multiple machines, and so this is something that we use for a while. Um, and for example, the kind of issues that we had was. Um, we weren't able to reuse the public IP that we generated in the past to the new Kubernetes cluster because some because uh, things changed on Azure side. And so we had to delete that public IP, generate a new one, and assign it to the load balancer. And so those those kind of issues were really small, but it meant, for example, it implied DNS changes. So we had to wait for a few hours before the DNS was totally propagated and stuff like this. And so I have a list of um, things that I that I changed. Um, everything has been pushed to the Jenkins Infra slash chat repository. Um, most of the changes, but yeah, we still have we still have to do a retrospective once um, everything is um, totally fixed with um, regarding that outage. So I propose to move to the next topic, which is LDAP database um, issues. Um, so, so yeah. be before you exit backup, are there? Any other services where we, we we should be checking short term that we've got a good backup and may, no, may not have it. no that the that database is the only stateful application um, storing okay. data on the cluster. So this is the only one that um, that mm -hmm. is at risk. Otherwise, every other services have been um, we reviewed them and they're all working now. Um, so yeah. So, yeah, so, so Jira and Confluence backups. Uh, they Sorry? My, uh, Jira and Confluence backups are in MySQL. And MySQL backup uh, goes where at the moment? So, so um, all the machine, so all the services running on mm -hmm. on bare metal machines like Jira, Confluence, um, they are just backups on the machines. So basically, we lose the machine, we lose the backup. 
So we don't have we don't we don't have any backup policy for the other services. So that's about one way to move one way to move to get have issues. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so that feels like a separate topic we ought to flag that that it's it's worth us considering should we put something that's not on machine as a backup load destination for the Jira issues database. The confluence um, I'm less worried about, but Jira yeah, confluence goes, confluence goes. Right. Confluence, yes, well, but, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, Jira, yes, but another one that you seriously need to be backed up this package or Jenkins that I Uh yeah. Um, uh, so the thing is, it. yeah. The thing is, right. we have quite a lot of services where we can retrieve some data, like we did with under DAP and Jira right now. Um, but because we don't have a defined backup policy at the moment, um, we are still at risk on other services. So it's really, it's really deep on the service. Mm -hmm. It should be quite cheap to back it up to Azure or AWS. I would assume. If, if you never access, because you normally pay for transfer, and if you're never transferring, you just really need setting up. So I don't, I don't think it would be about, a yeah, about Jira and Confluence, would it be possible to make a one-time snapshot uh, for the backup? So yeah, without setting up a pipeline, at least uh, that we have a recovery point. Oh, we, we have Confluence. Yeah. We, we, at least on Jira, we have backups that are taken, I believe it's every week. But what I, I think Olivier's point was is they're stored on the same machine. Yes, so it's also backup of it stored on the same machine. That's uh, the problem. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's why I'm asking whether we could have a snapshot for that. So, for example, for Wiki, we can just uh, keep one snapshot forever because we don't expect any changes to happen on Wiki now. I mean, the ones we cannot lose. And for Jira, it would be still useful in general. So that if anything happens, we at least have one snapshot of a more or less relevant version where we have this historic data. And yeah, after that, we could think uh, what we do with that next. But, yeah. So, yeah, possible? Possible. Um, yeah we, we, we just have to, 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 to find a place, maybe provision a, a storage, like, let's say on Azure or Amazon, whatever, and we just put it back in there. So, this is something global. Yeah. yeah, so I will follow and then critique it for that. And I guess for package Jenkins, I oh, it's a bit less trivial, but for that, we at least have a mirrors. Well, package chickens IO shouldn't be too bad because most of them are in um, Azure storage already. So all of the all the all the Debian and the Red Hat ones are definitely that, all in. That, that that that's what I'm saying by uh, we don't have a real backup policy, but most of the data are kind of already duplicated into multiple locations. So for example, you mentioned package Jenkins IO. Yes, you're right. Uh, most of the packages are stored on, on Azure, but for example, we don't have the very old version uh, like before we start to upload. upload. Um, so basically, for the release line that are not. Um, Use anymore. Uh, same file, for example, for uh, Hudson packages. Um, that's what I mean by most of the data are uh, can be retrieved in some way, but it really depends on the services and um, all the data. So, for example, for mirrors, um, um, mirrors do not buy, do not mirror. We do not mirror everything. Um, I think the limit is 100 gigabytes mirror, and otherwise everything else is removed from the from the web mirrors on a regular basis. So there is just one mirror called archive that you can see that archive that contains everything. Mm. So that yeah, we we kind of we again we don't have a pretty backup policy, but if we lose one machine, it's not uh, the end of the world. But we should yeah. have a backup policy. So in principle, if you wanted to do a cold backup. Uh, so basically, just uh, again a historical snapshot, which we put somewhere where it's not that expensive. Uh, what would be the effort to do that? Just a sync. Just a sync. Yeah, I think the first time would just be to call a, a nesting comments on the different machine, and that's it. Yeah. So if if we don't have to, let's say, 
if we just want to do it one snapshot today to be sure um it's quick um if we just want to put in place some um script and to do that on a, on a regular basis then you have to to work on the script and you have to to work on the monitoring as well and to in order to be sure that you're backing uh, you are doing backups and also that you are able to restore your backups and that you don't have corrupted data and so that's that's a different story yeah, i think that a one-time snapshot for confluence and for packaging can say is more than enough for jira it's a bit less trivial but it's a much bigger story uh, so just having this snapshot at least for now would be great For sure, we have some uh, sensitive data there, like let's say uh, security project and other things. That uh, because we wouldn't like to lose this data just in case. But yeah, for the rest, the uh, the second team, uh, it would be a good opportunity to reconsider <laughs> how we do that if we lose this data. It's still not cool. Thank you. So yeah, let's go back to the um, to the um, to the LDAP database. So basically, what we did here. Um, so something that you have to understand is you have so the, yeah, we use LDAP as a source of identity, um, but we also have multiple services that synchronize the LDAP database in their service, and so keep a local version of the of the of the users and so basically what happened here is we lost the LDAP database so someone is able to create a new account um, because the account is not registered in the LDAP database and because he created that LDAP, uh, that new user account he can now access the multiple services um, that use that um, user accounts so that was the risk um, highlighted here and that's basically uh, we initially review for all administrators like me or Lake, and um, there the risk was um, nil. But uh, we realized that um, it was a different story for plugin maintainers because we had something like 100, uh, 1,700 uh, plugin maintainers. And so basically, what we did is we fetched the, the list of users from repo.jenkins.org. Then we compared that list of users with um, the Jira database. Uh, we retrieved the user, the username, the email address, uh, and all the information that we could, and then we recreated the different user into the LDAP database. So that's that's the current state now. Um, so yeah, and now we are. I'm looking at um, how to restore um, the people who created an account but does not have an admin access. Um, I checked just before the meeting, and it's around 9,000 users that were removed from the LDAP database. And so now we have to, to bring them back into the, the LDAP database. Um, and so for that, we have to, to write a script for doing this. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the current state at the moment. So it's a safe assumption uh, that um, the releases uh, stay blocked uh, until the next week, at least, right? Um, I think it's a good assumption. Yeah, it's a good assumption. I, I blocked um, the. I blocked. Um, so nobody can register your account now. So basically, I block it until tomorrow, and I hope tomorrow to to, to be done with, um, with with all the users into that database. Yeah. So, so maybe. Another, sorry. Yeah, just uh, wanted to say that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we have some super users, for example, Kiki or Jessic Big, uh, who should be able to release uh, components now using the current setup of permissions. And yeah, probably we could uh, start uh, adding some contributors uh, to the allowed list, maybe additional resource or whatever, uh, so that we can partially restore uh, uh, the plot permissions for accounts for us for that. I don't think it's an end of the world if we delay uh, this um, general uh, release permissions, if you have a, a partial workaround. 
Yeah, and otherwise, if someone really need to release something, I mean, there is still options to release um, a plugin. Just like right now, it's easier to just block everything for everybody. So we are, we are sure that we're going to change um, the I mean, situation we, while we are fixing. We have identified the, uh, I think, 50 accounts that are maintainer accounts that we no longer have or that have been recreated. So what we can do is we can remove permissions from these accounts uh, in the permission files and repository permissions updater and just restore the old behavior because uh, we know which accounts are potentially compromised uh, or should not have access, uh, I mean, and uh, every everyone else is fine. So we can do that basically revert my patch after we, you know, make these people no longer maintainers, essentially, of the components they registered. And then we can go through them, uh, communicate with them with the uh, email addresses we have, for example, in Jira, um, uh, recreate their accounts, tell them they need to request a new password, and, and that's about it. Or we just start by resetting the, any email addresses that don't match up, um, reset, reset the passwords, and, and that's basically the same thing. But the vast majority of accounts are fine, and we know they're fine because they are in the, they existed before February. So I don't think we need to reintroduce the super user problem that we had with KK and Jesse, which I think I even got rid of. Okay. So, yeah, if we yep. don't reintroduce it, it's fine. We just need to provide a way or partial way. So, maybe we have options. Um, okay, great. There, is there any other question regarding that? Sounds right. Um, so I guess we can move to the last topic, which is uh, the work being done on, on the automated release. Um, obviously, I did not have the time to work on this over the last week. Um, but basically, just before the outage happened, I just merged a major PR where um, we could theoretically release table security weekly release directly from the release environments. Uh, for the stable, I think it's ready. But before releasing stable, I would like to be sure that we can uh, use the security one. And um, yeah, um, right now for the security releases, um, I'm looking a way to, to test that the full process is working correctly. Uh, so that's that's the current state. Yeah. But I think it's more topic for um, Daniel. Sorry, what was the question? Uh, it's not a question. It's just like I was just saying, like um, we we have to sit together how to test it and to validate that the process is working for you. Right. Um, I mean, uh, in principle, what we can do is on, once uh, the the uh, arguments are introduced that make the entire thing configurable, um, we can. Could, we can set up an environment where we would release a weekly release as if it were a security update and see whether that hap uh, works. Or we just re create new repos in for Maven and for Git and pretend there's a security update happening. We can do either of these things. So yeah. yeah. So basically, yeah. this, this is something that this is something that we could test now. Um, so right now we have two jobs: the one that release um, that use Maven release plugin, and the one that package everything. And we also uh, promote. We can also promote artifact at the end of the release, uh, at the end of the packaging. And so everything is parameterized now. So we just have, yeah, we just have to to sync together to, to test the workflow and see if it's uh, working. Well, so it sounds like if we have time we could release the next weekly from the security one just do a fake security release which is really just a real weekly release 
Yeah, the problem that weak security release uh, requires uh, release from uh, the old release infrastructure. So we cannot use uh, release staging to say for that, right? Uh, no, it's all, it's really for testing the security flow. So, so basically, what what Tim is suggesting okay. is uh, instead of um, you know, creating a weekly release on Monday, we create uh, a security release based on the weekly content. So we just fetch the data from the Jenkins CI master branch. We don't have, we we do not introduce uh, security, whatever. It's just like we we test like we would be on the security path. And for Fine with me for. For my kind, for as kindness to me, I'd appreciate it for Tuesday rather than Monday that we did that release. But Monday, if you if we must do it on Monday, we'll figure out a way to do it. So it let's, let's just, just just we can we can do it on Tuesday. It was just a confusion from me um, because uh, I just missed the email where we said okay we are going to do the release on Tuesday, and so initially I put a cran job on Monday, and um, the. That was not taken into account yesterday, so we did the release yesterday, but it will not happen anymore. So we can do it on Tuesday. I definitely prefer that as well. So I yeah, so it sounds like we can I, I'll sync with Daniel to see how we can trigger uh, we can do the next weekly with the security mm -hmm. workflow. Yeah. yeah. And we also okay. uh, do not need to, to solve the issue with um, uh, release permissions then. And another then another stuff that I also add in the release environment is I now had a folder called components and on the under components we can now release the re remoting components. Um, yeah, so we can we can use the code signing certificate for the remoting components. So the next the next release will happen from from that environment. And uh, I know the people who are interested to to use a code signing certificate to sign components. Um, so yeah, that's the first the first. Um, that's one additional change to the release environment. Yeah. Does that like, does support security fixes, or would they still need to be released uh, as before, or staked? What do you uh, What do you mean? Are you talking about the core release or the remoting release? Remoting, but oh. remoting is a component we deliver as part of Jenkins Core, and there have been security fixes in Jenkins Core that were actually in remoting before. So how would they be handled? Hmm. That's a good question. I... Yeah, I have to very I have to check. Um to me I think we can yeah, I have to very I don't know yet right now. Okay. Yeah, I mean every, every component that goes into Jenkins core could be part of a core security update and would need to be staged and then figure out how to in include it in in, 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 uh, in the core through the POM or whatever. And then we stage core as a security update. So this gets annoying pretty quick. So basically, since so for the for the remoting component, I just reuse most of the what we do for Jenkins Core, except that I remove some parts. Um, so I do not expect it to be a big work here. It's just like um, it was more proof of concept to see if we can we can release the remoting. So um, if the only thing that we need is to to introduce staging environments, um, that's not a big deal. Um, otherwise, um, the last question on automated core releases. I was just going to mention that we've got two issues on the weekly at the moment with the release process. One is that Windows is broken due to a Microsoft security update, um, and we need to rebuild our images, so I think we're having issues with that. And the other is that um, if the um, packaging fails, um, it seems like we get package, we get the metadata uploaded, but not the packages uploaded to Azure. So both Ubuntu and so both the Debian and the Red Hat line both start failing, um, even though they shouldn't. 
So rega regarding the issue uh, with the Debian that is not totally published, this is something weird to me right now because uh, the way the packages are happening is you have Debian happening at the same time than uh, CentOS, um, SUSE, Windows, and it's also published war. And if for some reason one of them is broken, it will finish the, the I mean, the, the full the full steps. For example, Debian should be published. And there is another um, thing that needs to be improved in the release process is um, at the end of the release, at the end of the packaging process, um, we synchronize the different mirrors. Uh, so we, we trigger a script. But that script is also a trigger based on a crunch job and does other things, not only synchronizing mirror, mirrors. Um, and so right now, even if the Windows packaging is broken, um, it should still publish the data behind the Reddit. And it's not, though. Some, so the metadata is getting updated, but the packages aren't getting uploaded to Azure. I, I don't know why, without being able to see what's on that machine and what's going on. Um, but from okay. the Jenkins job, you just get four reports back for, for a Azure blob store URL. Um, just, um, it's just been painful right. because the last two weeks they released the failed because of Windows, which has meant we've had like a day or two uh, where users have been complaining that they can't download Jenkins. I, I should be able to push uh, an updated Windows image today for the that's used, and then I'm going to look at um, the idea of a separate VS Tools image from the normal JNLP or inbound agent. Um, yeah. So hopefully that'll make it easier to update the inbound agent separate from the VS tools. So, yeah, just just some quick uh, I mean, updates on the, on the Windows packaging. So um, the packet mix-up is failing since we upgraded the cluster. And the reason to that is because we were using old version of, of Windows on the old cluster. And since we uh, upgraded the cluster, we now have up-to-date version of Windows and the nodes. And um, there was a security issue. Um, with VS tools in old version of Windows. And in order to fix that security issue, they introduced breaking change. And so now um, the old VS tools does not work with the new v Windows nodes. So that's one of the things. And the other, the other issue, which is related to Windows, but also to the infrastructure, is um, when we started using uh, Windows nodes for the release process, we had one big image containing GNLP, contain, uh, GNLP and, um, and VS tools, obviously. And we had also to put in place specific um, infrastructure levels on that specific nodes. And so now that we upgrade uh, every Jenkins instance, so we, are, we upgraded the Jenkins charts that we are using the infrastructure in Sun. Um, we are putting a lot of logic in that specific Windows container in order to be able to work in our infrastructure. Um, and this does not scale. And it's, it, and it's also difficult to, to test on local machines because we, I mean, we have to do a lot of specific um, configura configuration changes in order to test the, the Windows packaging. So that's why uh, we really need uh, a new container for Windows. Okay, so we are running out, um, out of time. So any last topic that you want to discuss here? Otherwise, we can switch on RFC. I don't know if you saw if you saw the, the news regarding the plugin site. So nice improvement. Um, yeah. So we can now have access to the issues and um, the release information for every plugin. I don't. I, I don't know if you are planning to to you to also have issues coming from GitHub issues, or is it supposed to work? Um, this uh, request. For... Sorry. Uh, so I reported the uh, it as an uh, enhancement because we de facto have components like Jenkins configuration as code using GitHub issues, and right now it uh, shows Jira, which is, well, not that relevant. Although I'm not sure what still needs to be uh, implemented for that. I believe it's, um, we need some uh, updates and metadata, so there was pull request uh, from team for that. And uh, after that, uh, yeah, we will need to, to apply some magic uh, to get it posted. But yeah, the rendering is already there. I don't think that issues and, pull and the change logs are rendered much differently. Okay. 
I've I've uh, commented that it would be useful if uh, changelog files were recognized, especially if the releases would be empty otherwise. And uh, there is also an issue for it as well. Uh, so just go to the plugin site, and there is GitHub issues for that. Okay. Nice. Uh, yeah. I will uh, post it in the Gitter chat or elsewhere. But yeah, it's a really great improvement. Mm. So, I, let's, let's, let's call for, for topic. Otherwise, I propose to, to, to stop the meeting here and to go back to our scene. One time, two time, three time. Bye bye. Thanks for your time and see All you right. later. Yeah.